All right, Casey. I was thinking about some potential follow-up questions that people might have. Oh, yes. After watching that video, I was hoping, since you're such a good multitasker guy, you could answer a few questions <laughs> while you plant. Let's see. Let's try. Uh, what makes vetiver so good for this sort of thing? Erosion control and retaining walls. Mm. Well, that answer is in the roots, if you go close to this. So you can already see just these slips, how dense the roots are. Mm -hmm, and vetiver mm -hmm. has what's called very, very strong gravitropism, which means the roots always go straight down. It doesn't matter if you plant it this way or upside down, they'll, they'll always go in the direction of gravity. Um, they don't run, they don't spread. So what you get when we plant them this tight is all these roots start to intertwine. And these root systems can be anywhere from 9 to 15 feet deep. And what you functionally have is an underground biological retaining wall that gets stronger with time instead of weaker. Um, and for that reason, it's really good, especially when these grass cones are up like this, it turns into a super dense wall that can catch any sort of downhill material movement. So you get this sediment that builds up behind it. And then even when this plant gets buried to here or higher, it'll root off of the cones. So basically that's where the self terracing comes in, which I think you mentioned in an earlier video. As material piles up behind these grass clumps, um, it will root into those clumps or into that material and then send more roots down. So you get basically a self terracing uh, biological retaining wall. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. This next, qu this next question, that, but, uh... <laughs> this next question might be a little easier to plant. Okay. Um, is this, is vetiver good in every climate? It's good in a really broad range of climates. Um, it can tolerate frost and freezing. It will be killed at, on the top, but it can grow back provided the roots don't freeze. Um, it can be burned, which is great for fire climates, and it will come back from the, uh, the roots. Um, yeah, it is, it is actually a subtropical plant, but it is highly adaptable to a broad range of different climate types and soil pHs and all that kind of stuff very drought tolerant but can also handle being inundated with water mm, okay um, so it won't die if you if you live somewhere like say California and you don't want to water it over the dry season it won't die correct once it's established so get it established take care of it during that first year and then after that you can pretty much ignore it and if you don't mind that aesthetic that'll be fine okay nice you mentioned that it burns what about that in California? Yeah, so that's the nice thing is that like, you know, say you had a wood retaining wall that can burn and then your retaining wall is gone. Whereas in this case, the function of that is in the ground. You can burn it off at the ground height and then it will regrow. So you still have the soil retaining mechanism and then within a year you'll get your, your grass back. Is this something that you wouldn't want to put near the house though, due to its flammability if you lived somewhere like California? It's, it's not, it doesn't have a tremendously high fuel load. The grass is very light um, and hollow and there's no volatile oils in it, um, at least as far as I know. Um, there is obviously essential oil, but it's not highly volatile. So it will burn, but there's not a lot of mass. So you're not gonna get, it will burn out really quick. And then obviously if you keep it maintained and you cut it, then you don't have a giant amount of fuel right near your home. You just have a, a nice orderly trimmed hedge. Nice. Yeah. Well, that sounds pretty it, good. If you do water it maybe once every two weeks and keep it green throughout the summer, then you would have a wall of green grass, which would be even more of a fire break. Nice. So that's that's it. If you want to keep it green during the summer in somewhere, say California, just once every couple of weeks. Once every two weeks ish. Once it's you know fully established. Again, that's that's kind of here what we know from this. Southern California area in, in Thousand Oaks, but um, you know mileage may vary on that, so <laughs> don't take my word for gospel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and last question, I think, yeah. unless you can think of any others. Um, what's the uh, what's the max spacing that you think you could go on this and still have the function of mm. erosion control and living yeah, so retaining wall? Ultimately, if the plants are happy, um, they'll grow into about a two foot wide clump. That's kind of the mature size of a plant um, and not too much beyond that. So we plant them at four inch spacing, generally speaking, but uh, whether you plant it at four inch, six inch, one foot, it's basically how much time do you want to wait until they've closed together and just made a solid wall of grass combs that can hold any sort of soil. Um, 
So yeah, just know that the mature grass will be about two feet in diameter, but that's gonna take probably, if we're not in the tropics, at least two years of growing, I would imagine, to reach that point, maybe more. Nice, okay. So yeah. we're, doing, we're doing the tight spacing because we want this to want do it its fast. thing quick. I yeah. thought of one more question. Okay, go. So now I'm blanking on it. Hold on, hold on. It's gonna come to me. Oh yeah. White for it. Is this uh, is this invasive? How, how does it spread? Great question. Yes, it is. So this is Chrysopogon zizanoides. Um, there are different types of vetiver grass that do set seed, and some do spread via root runners. This one is completely is propagated only by asexual um, root division. So. I don't know if that's the right word, but basically you, you split it at the roots. So it does not set seed and the roots don't run. Like I said, they just go straight down. Um, but if you break it apart into clumps, you can get one clump to turn it into you know, 50 additional plants. So it does not run. Basically where you plant it is where it will stay. Nice, yeah. So, but, but easy to propagate. Easy to propagate, you plant this but yourself. also very well behaved. Yeah. Good it's stuff. Pretty cool. <laughs> Nice job. I think you planted three vetiver slits <laughs> in the last six minutes, <laughs> but I would have maybe got, got through one. So here we go. Only in between questions. We are on the last seven feet last strip. of vetiver out of 1,400 slips and super excited to see some follow-up of what this looks like yeah. in another month or two.